Today you will see a short 9-ball match between me and one of my students and I will also commentate on a match and explain things as usual. Ok guys, the match will start in a minute, just a few updates for you. I was at the Derby City Classic but unfortunately lost my first match Hill Hill with a dry break and my second match 7-9. I'm a little disappointed but it still was an amazing trip and I met a lot of you guys and had some great conversations. Unfortunately I didn't play at the TV table. But since a lot of you guys seem to be interested in seeing how I play in tournaments, I will from now on take my camera gear with me when I'm attending tournaments and record the matches if possible. And as a little bonus, once I've reached 100k subscribers, you will see me in a match against a real big pro player which is known all around the world. This is definitely going to be a fun match for me. So if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the button and help me to reach 100k subscribers. And now let's get into the match. I'm playing against Valentine, which is a friend of mine but also one of my students. We practice a lot together and also play some matches to get a little bit of exercise. Okay, I lost the cue ball on the break here a little bit. Um, the cue ball ended up close to the corner pocket. Usually you want to be at the center of the table because that guarantees you or it doesn't guarantee but it gives you the best possible um, chance to have a nice shot on the next ball. Here I have a jump shot on the one ball and I'm playing the jump shot because A. Um, I just have to go over the edge of the six ball and B. Very important. I'm guaranteed a position on the two ball if I make the jump shot. Um, if you are left with a jump shot after the break shot and you can make the jump but you have no position afterwards, don't play the jump shot because it doesn't pay off. Here it paid off and I have to get position from the two to the three now. Here it's very important that I make a clear mind where I want to go. Because the five ball is a big ball, I could either go um, above the five ball or below but you have to make a clear decision before you play the shot because otherwise you will have a big chance to end exactly behind the five ball. Here I wanted to go above the five ball. It was close but I still have the perfect position here on the free ball. The four ball passes into both corner pockets but I play it into the corner pocket where the six ball is. And the reason I'm doing this is because um, if I'm hitting too hard, um, the key ball will go further and I will still have a shot either into the corner pocket or also into the side pocket. And that's very important because here I had a plan B if my speed control was off. Here just a small draw back shot because um, I want to have a nice angle on the 5 ball to go up table for um, the 6 ball and I have the perfect angle. And here again, you want to make a clear mind. Do you want to go on the short rail or onto the long rail? Um, there's no right or wrong, you just have to make your position before you pull the trigger, before you even go down on the shot. Yeah, I ended up straight on the 6 ball, um, which is bad, because um, here I just can draw a little back. I can also play a stop shot to have the perfect angle on the 8 ball but then I would have been way too far away from the 8 ball. That's why I drew the cue ball back. I don't have the perfect angle on the 8 ball where I just can play a stop shot, but I'm close to the ball and I just have to play a stun shot with a little bit of left and English to get the right angle from the first rail, from the long rail to have a nice shot on the 9 ball. And as you see, I have the perfect shot on the 9 ball and it was the perfect start into the match. Ok, let's see how this break turns out. Again, I didn't play the cue ball very well, um, I'm not at the center of the table. Usually when doing the cut break you wanna just go into one rail, into the long rail and then towards the center of the table. But I use a different break on a 9 ball, um, which is not very common. But for me, most of the time it works pretty well. Um, but you will see it probably in the next match um, what exactly I try to do on the break shot. Okay, here I just have a push shot. And um, what I'm thinking when pushing here is I don't want to leave a clear view on the 1 ball. But I want to leave a kick on the 1 ball. 
um, so that I can kick from behind into the one and send the one um, to the second diamond of the long rail, which means that the one ball will travel towards the short rail. You see him aiming here exactly what I was thinking. So he made the right decision. And also, if you hit it a little off, the one ball has a good chance to go into the side pocket. So for example, if you're playing 10 ball, you always call the one ball into the side pocket because um, it's a free shot. You never call a safety in 10 ball. That's very important. And as you saw here, he made the one ball. Um, yeah, that was not the initial plan, but it turned out pretty well. He has a nice angle on the two ball, maybe a little too much. Um, I'm not sure if he could actually just stun towards the center of the table or if it's too much angle. What he tries to do here is he want to go into the long rail and get short position for the foul ball, which is totally fine. It's a very natural path and um, you have a good chance. Unfortunately, the table is pretty fast. He came very close. Um, he has a makeable shot and the good thing here is um, the cue ball will travel two rails towards the five ball um, just with a tiny bit of left and English and follow the cue ball. But um, the important thing here is the very, very important thing is you don't want to be straight on the five ball because look where the six ball is. You need an angle on the five ball Ideally, it would have been a little above from where the cue ball ended up now or a little to the left so that you can go into the long rail. Um, but he ended up straight here and you don't want to be straight on shots like this. There are shots you want to be straight, but you always have to think three shots ahead. And here, where the six ball is located, it would have been very, very um, important to get not straight on the five ball. He had to draw the cue ball back, was very straight, had to go to the center of the table again, which is a difficult shot and often on those shots um, you choke on the shot and that's what happened. Here I'm looking if the 7 ball passes and it has around half a pocket, but since the pockets here on this table are pretty big, half a pocket is um, enough. Okay, on the 5 ball I wanna get probably towards the center of the table again where I have that shot where I can go from the six ball into the long rail and then with the right amount of spin and low I want to go exactly towards the straight line of the seven ball because um, if you have half a pocket um, it makes the things a lot easier for you if you're straight in because then when aiming at the seven ball you also see the pocket if I have an angle here on the seven ball and I have to go really close um, uh, next to the 8 ball into half a pocket, it's very difficult, but if you're straight, it makes things a lot easier for you. Okay, just drawing back a little bit, straight on the 8 ball would be perfect. I ended up with a little bit of an angle where I can just follow the ball or with left hand English go two rails. And I ended up with a perfect shot on a 9 ball again. And um, that's the second game for me here. Okay, let's talk about my break shot again. And as I said, it's not textbook, it's not very common, but for me it works. What I'm trying to do here is to hit right next to the side pocket with a lot of low and right hand side on the cue ball. And as you see here, I went three rails um, to the center of the table and end up here with the perfect position on the two ball. It's really reliable for me. It works very often, uh, more often than you would think because the cue ball has to travel a lot. Um, but for me, yeah, I just got used to it and uh, that's why I play this break. Here on the five ball, I don't want to be straight on the five ball. I want to have a little bit of an angle to make things easier for me to get the right angle on the six ball. As you see again, I'm thinking three shots ahead, but um, it didn't work this time. I got straight, so all I have um, left here is a draw shot. And yeah, it happened. I got straight on the six ball. Don't get me wrong, it's no problem here, um, but 
An angle on the 6 ball would have been a lot easier for me, because now you see I have to draw the cue ball into the rail. Of course, it works um, 9 or even 10 out of 10 times. Yeah, let's say 9 out of 10 times. But um, you always want to make life as easy as possible for you, because the easier the shot gets, the easier you make the, the life for you, the, the right angle, um, the less mistakes you will make. So it's very important to have that right angle and to think three shots ahead. But this rake was pretty easy and uh, my second break and run of the match here. Okay, let's have a look at my break shot again. So, as I said, I'm trying to hit on the right hand side of the side pocket. Here on this break I hit too full and as you see the cue ball is again going three rails. But now it's going more towards, um, yeah, down table again. And that's the problem because I hit the one ball too full. But um, yeah, I still would have had a shot on the one ball here. Okay, uh, this time I made no ball um, and Valentine has to, yeah, all he can do here is um, a safety shot. The good thing is when the one and the two are very close to each other, you can play the one ball into the two and you will definitely know that the one ball will stay exactly where it is now. So you can concentrate 100% on the cue ball here. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what um, he tried to do here. Um, it didn't turn out very well. I'm left on the one ball. It's a difficult shot, but it's a makeable shot. The good thing here is when playing the one ball, I can concentrate purely on making the ball because the natural path of the cue ball brings me just right to the second long rail and where the cue ball is located, I can just concentrate on making the one ball here. It's very important to stay down on the shot, to cue very straight, don't um, add left or right in English if you're close to the rail and it turned out pretty well. I have enough angle on the two ball to go one rail towards the center of the pocket again. As you see the shot comes up very often where balls are close to the rail and where you're going into the long rail and then um, into the right direction and to your desired direction. It's a very very important shot. Okay, as you may notice, the 4 ball doesn't pass the 6 ball. So I have two options here. I can go where I pointed and play the combination, or I can take a chance and go into the 6 ball. The combination is a little bit off angle, so yeah, it's not an easy one. That's why I decide to take a chance and go into um, the cluster of balls. But when I'm doing this, I'm not hitting soft, I'm hitting hard enough that if I hit the 6 ball wrong, that I don't snooker myself behind the 6 ball. So um, yeah, this shot turned out okay. I um, have an awkward angle on the 6 ball, um, but I have a makeable shot again. Here I have to play with inside English and cut it into the corner pocket. And again, it's very important to decide, do I want to hit the short rail or the long rail? And um, if you hit this point here on the rail, you want to hit the long rail. If you hit more on this side, you want to hit the short rail. And the problem, if I remember it right, I didn't make a clear mind here. I didn't decide where I exactly want to hit. And as you see, where the cue ball travels. It travels exactly towards this diamond. And this diamond leads me exactly towards the corner pocket. So um, yeah, that was just a mental mistake. Um, because I didn't have a clear mind and it's really important to have that because it would not have been hard to just add less English to go um, to the second long rail. Yeah, and that's just um, yeah, a mental mistake. So it's really, really important um, to have a clear um, view, a clear image in your head where the cue ball would travel. Here we played a very good shot. He was going towards the line of the 6 ball. He has the right angle on the 6 ball. Just stun a little bit towards the 7 ball. And again, leave an angle on the 7 ball. That's very important. You don't want to go all the way up tab uh, down table or too close to the 7 ball because you risk getting straight. And he did that perfectly here. He has the right angle. The 8 ball passes into the side pocket. Or he can even play it long. Um, both options are okay. And he left himself with this angle here. 
You now can decide, do you want to play it into the side or into the corner pocket. The advantage of the corner pocket is that the pocket is probably bigger um, and you also get a nice position on a 9 ball. So if you end up in such a situation, it's very often the better way to get into the corner pocket because, yeah, the pocket gets bigger. If you have just a slight, um, yeah, opening into the side pocket, then don't play it into the side because the shot into the corner pocket is not very difficult. Just because the 8 ball is in front of the side pocket doesn't mean that you have to play it into the side. Okay, let's have a look at Valentine's break here. Did you see where the cue ball traveled? He hit the one ball on the wrong side, he should have cut the one ball to the right, that means the cue ball would have gone to the opposite long rail, but this can happen of course. He made no ball and I'm left with a very nice shot on the one ball, the problem is the seven ball is a little bit of a blocker but should be no problem, I wanna be very close to the opposite long rail and again, do you see this shot? I have to go into the long rail and get the right path towards the opposite long rail. I want to be very close to the side pocket because I'm a lefty and if I would go closer to the two ball I um, can't reach the two ball anymore so that's why I want to be very close to the side pocket and that's also the reason why I totally misjudged this ball. Um, usually I'm very good in those shots, I can maneuver the cue ball in um, a very nice and um, very similar line to what I'm thinking but this was, yeah, it's just no excuse here. Okay, here's ball in hand. Um, you could just stun the cue ball a little bit out to get the free ball between the 4 and the 5 ball into the upper left corner pocket. But he does something different here. He wants to play the free ball into the side pocket, which is a little more risky, but it's still okay. You just want to be careful with the 6 ball. And yeah, as you saw, a little harder and he would have been behind the 6 ball, but it turned out perfectly, so it's still okay. But I personally would have played the free ball between the 4 and the 5 ball because, yeah, um, as I said, you want to make life as easy as um, possible for you and you don't want to make uh, mistakes and reduce the possibility for mistakes. That's why I would have played the shot this way. And by the way, he missed the free ball here. Um, I don't know why it was a pretty easy shot. Maybe he wasn't ready for the shot, he didn't prepare. And do you see this shot again? Free ball close to the rail going into the long rail and towards the line of the 4 ball. I'm left a little bit on the wrong side, that means I have to go into the long rail, that means going forward and adding a touch of left hand English, or I could also go with right hand English and play the 5 ball into the other corner pocket. I decided for this path and I'm on the wrong side. Yeah, I was a little afraid of that inside English because inside English is always um, more difficult to play than outside English, but it's still very doable. Just want to play a stun shot with right hand English, going into the short rail, past the 9 on the left side. Almost passed it, yeah, I hit the 9 ball, but it turned out pretty okay. I have enough angle. Here again, you see how important angles are. If I would have been straight here, it would have been a lot more difficult, but I can go into the long rail. And again, it's this shot that came up so often in this match. That's why I already made um, two or three videos about this shot. Um, I will put the links in the video description so that you um, can watch those videos as well. Uh, videos, excuse me. I'm trying to learn, but um, it's hard for me to pronounce it right. Because in Germany you say video, um, video and um, in English you say video obviously. Um, yeah, but um, one day I will learn it to pronounce it right. And as you see here, same shot again. Seven ball is next to the rail, the cue ball will travel into the long rail and we want to have the nice angle to go out to get position for the eight ball. So again, this shot comes up so often. Here I don't have the perfect angle, it would have been the perfect angle to play the same shot again. Um, but this time I have to play a different shot. Here with left hand English I could go two rails and towards the line of the nine ball. But I felt a little more comfortable with just following the ball. Um, yeah, it increases the margin for error just a little bit. But I'm still left with a very doable shot. And 
and here are the nine for the match and yeah four to one in favor of me let's look at the statistics yeah i'm pretty happy with the performance here pot success of 100 percent um i didn't miss a ball but um we just played um five wrecks so uh, yeah not bad i made two mistakes where i scratched um average shot time of 17.7 seconds um it's nice um, I made an average of 1.25 balls on the break and I had two break and runs. Um, Valentine wasn't bad, he didn't play bad. Um, yeah, he just made nine balls, but he also had a pot success of 82%. That means he missed two shots. Um, one of the shots he missed was um, because he got straight. If you remember, he had to draw all the way back. And yeah, the second shot was the free ball into the side pocket. This was, um, yeah, mental mistakes, I guess, because usually he makes those shots. And yeah, he just break once, um, that's where um, he hit the one ball on the wrong side and that was the reason that no ball dropped. But yeah, he didn't play bad, um, yeah, it was a nice match, it was really fun to play. And um, let me know if you guys enjoyed this match and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see me play against a pro player at 100k subscribers. And now I'm gonna pick a random comment again from one of my earlier videos. Videos, sorry. Thanks Martin for your comment. You wrote, I've been playing seriously for a year and a half and I finally understand coming into the line of the next object ball. I feel stupid and appreciative at the same time. Thank you. Thank you too for your comment. And yeah, going into the line is a very powerful tool and pool to um, yeah, make speed control a lot easier for you if you're going into the line. Um, you can create the right angle. Um, if you add a little more, a little less English, so you can, um, yeah, rather easily get on the right side of the ball and as I said, speed control is not a big factor. But there is one important thing that I noticed in some lessons with my students. If it's not natural or if it's really hard to do to get into the line, then don't try to do it just for the sake of getting into the line. Uh, because you can miss the shot, it's hard to do. Sometimes you just have to cross the line um, it doesn't work all the time and if you have to force the cue ball, if you have to do something crazy just to get into the line, then better just cross the line and concentrate on your speed control. Okay, that's it for today. Um, thanks for watching guys, thanks for commenting, thanks for sharing. Um, if you enjoyed this video, leave me a like, leave me a thumbs up. Um, yeah, um, all of this supports me and the channel a lot. Um, thanks to my sponsors, thanks for watching. And as always, see you at the next lesson. Take care.